So in this video we're looking at adding and subtracting vectors. So vector being something with magnitude and direction represented by an arrow. So adding, um, we use the idea of going top to tail. So top to tail is our rule, always, always. When we're adding, adding or adding, and even when we're subtracting. And I'll get to subtracting. Um, so for example, if we have this uh, force being applied to a rock and uh, in one direction um, let's draw it in a bit of a funny way, here's our rock We've got a force being applied that way, force 1 and another force being applied this way and force 2 I think we know that it'll sort of go off in this direction somewhere um, that's not a vector, I'm just kind of indicating the direction so if we're adding them up to find the net force, the total force we would add top to tail, F1 there's the top and there's the tail, F2. F1 plus F2. And then we'll draw a resultant uh, like this. You can either draw a resultant with a kind of a thicker arrow with just the same head in the same position, but I like to represent it by that double arrow uh, kind of thing just down here with the two little bits on there. But um, what we'd also have to do is calculate the angle um, that is that the um, the vector of the resultant vector operates at and with vector it really doesn't matter which angle you're calculating so long as you read the context of the question really carefully to see what they want you to find out but usually you'd give it from vertical or from horizontal um, to give the, the angle that you're after um, so uh, yeah that's adding um, they don't always occur at right angles by the way you'll find at level two that they tend to um, be at right angles but they're not always at right angles sometimes you'll get um, vectors at a kind of a crazy funky angle like this and then like this and you might even have three vectors or four vectors or or whatever but when you're adding them they all add up and you go from your original start to your original finish point and that there would be a resultant vector just that small length there okay that's the cool thing if you're talking about displacement you don't worry about all of this extra distance that's been covered in total Okay, from getting from there to there, you ignore all of that distance, the entire path, you just go straight to it. Okay, so there's some um, advantages and disadvantages to each which you can work through on there. But that's not what we're about right now, you'll see lots of examples in the questions. Now we move on to subtracting vectors. Okay, we'll go back to my blue, so subtracting. And we have this problem where we can't actually subtract vectors, because it's a thing with an arrow. And if you subtract, say, the first one minus the second one, you start trying to do things like with the arrows all starting from the same place, and you put them head to head, and who knows what's going on. Don't do it that way. Okay. To subtract, I'll call this vector A and vector B, and we're interested in doing A minus B. Um, how we will do that is a double arrow. That's not a vector. It's just showing you an indication. We actually do A plus the negative of B. Okay, and I'll give you a more concrete example shortly, but um, if we're using these vectors that we have here, A would remain like it is. Um, B is all of a sudden now going to have the arrow on the other end. So negative B is not a negative number, it just changes the direction. So uh, let's put B over the top of it so you can see there's B and there's negative B. So what we're interested in is just these two. So when we're subtracting vectors, we add the negative essential, add the negative. So how that would look, top to tail, A plus negative B, still top to tail, and there's our resultant. So there's A, there's negative B, and there's A minus B, is this vector down the bottom here. There we go. So giving a more concrete example, um, change in a vector quantity, let's go to a different colour again, uh, boring black, um, the change in a vector quantity, let's say the change in velocity, change in anything is the final minus the initial. So change in velocity is final velocity minus the initial velocity. Again, because we can't do this as a vector um, addition, uh, subtraction, we can't subtract, we have to add the negative. So change in velocity is final minus the initial, therefore we go to change in velocity as final plus the negative of the initial. I'll just put brackets around to make it really clear and obvious, but you can just make a little... Um, little negative at the top if you like, plus negative like that, but stick with what i got. Um, and if our, if our final velocity, let's look at circular motion, 
um, if we've got a, a, an object that's moving around in a circle, here's our initial velocity as a tangent to that surface, and our uh, final velocity is also at a tangent there. Uh, interestingly, circular motion, the speed does not change, so the length of the arrow does not change, but the direction does as it's going around the circle. Um, but anyway, let's list all of our vectors for the calculation. We've got the final, like this. We've got the initial, same length, but this way. And then we've got the negative of the initial, minus vi. So because we're doing the final plus the negative of the initial, we will go final plus negative initial, just top to tail, top to tail, top to tail. Always top to tail. And then the other rule, add the negative, add the, change the direction on the arrow, add the negative. So final minus the initial, um, there is a change in velocity. That works for change of momentum and all sorts of things as well, but that was our final, that was our negative of the initial. And now we would have to do an angle calculation as well to find what angle that's applied from. And you choose which angle based on the context of the question and use your trig, um, trigonometry Sokatoa to work out what that angle will be. Now interestingly, um, and I just want to highlight this one, uh, let's see if I can, no that's not going to work, I'll just use this. Uh, interestingly, that change in velocity for circular motion, you can link this up with the circular motion video or you can forget about it until you study that part, but that change in velocity is towards the centre. So you can see the direction of the change in velocity is towards the centre, which um, indicates that the acceleration tool will be towards the centre and therefore the unbalanced force is towards the centre. And that's, that's really significant. It's also interesting to note that the change in velocity um, is larger than either of those initial velocities. Um, you can also think of this just as a, another side, side track. Um, to, to get that change in velocity, to get the final velocity from the initial, you have to take off that initial part and the going to the right, so you have to subtract. Um, you have to subtract um, that, and then you also have to add on that, which gives you that change. So um, that's just another way of thinking of it to show that it does actually work, and that you end up with that in any case. Okay, that's adding and subtracting vectors. Don't forget it.